let's start with talking about um, uh, uh, GDP. Mm. Um, let, let's talk about how we calculate this, because I'm uh, uh, old enough to remember that in the wake of um, the fall of the Soviet Union, that there was a, there, there seemed to be a brief moment. I feel like it was in ninety, I don't, I, I, you know, ninety three maybe, mm-hmm. of of an idea of recalculating the GDP, yeah. uh, and then it just sort of went away. Um, but 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 tell us how do we calculate the GDP? What is uh, problematic about it? So there's been many of these moments of rethinking GDP, of redesigning GDP. It's become kind of the holy grail of progress in society. It's calculated as price times quantity. How much stuff do we make, right, times its price? And at, to some extent, your material well-being, right, how much a society consumes and produces is part of your progress, is part of your well-being, but only up to a point. And we also have to ask, what does it count and what does it miss? So, I mean, you can go back, for example, to Senator Robert Kennedy in 1968 had this famous speech about how GDP sort of counts nothing (laughs) that is most important to us as fathers, as mothers, as citizens, as communities. Um, It counts things like, you know, wildfires and the cost to rebuild communities and homes as a good thing. It counts oil spills as a good thing. It doesn't count things like unpaid care at home. It doesn't count trade-offs between our leisure and our labor. Um, It misses so many things, yet is held up as the kind of um, the, the, the one true indicator of progress of a society. And when you go through the effort, as we have have in the field of ecological economics, of teasing out what is a benefit in terms of what we spend money on and what is a cost, especially regrettable costs, teasing out the the distribution of the benefits and costs of a growing economy. We find when you do the math that the United States has been in a progress recession since the late 1970s. All right, let's uh, let's get a little more concrete with w- yeah. with that so that we can understand what 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 that means because I mean and, and like you say just another, you know, classic example that uh, that I've always understood is that you know, if I get robbed, somebody busts my door down in my house yep. and they steal all my stuff, um that's going to benefit the GDP. Great for um, the economy. <laughs> it's great because I got to go back out, I got to buy all this stuff again, I got to hire somebody to repair mm-hmm. my door. But the cost to me in terms of my time, the cost for me in terms of my sense of security, the cost for me in terms of like, you know, uh, the, the, the sense of like, oh, I, you know, that was a family heirloom. None yeah. of that is regarded whatsoever. My, right. my, my overall happiness, whether this, you know, in the time I got to take off of work. And so I don't, uh, you know, whatever, I, I miss the big meeting and I don't have the chance to do the proposal. None of that is, is, is accounted for in this. So what is, wh- when you say that we're in a progress recession, what, what does that mean? Like what constitutes progress in your, uh, uh, you know, I guess, sure, uh, sure. a type of economics? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, how does the economy contribute to our well-being? Right. So, of course, consumption contributes to our well-being. Right. Um, We want to be able to afford the necessities of life. We want to be able to afford a roof over our head and food on the table and our kids to have good health care and a good life. But um, so much of what we spend money on, your example of getting robbed, is a regrettable expense. Right. To rebuild homes after disaster is a regrettable expense Um, to, to spend money on health care. Um, as a sort of defense to having chemicals in our food system (laughs) is a regrettable expense. So we should really understand not just the quantity of the economy, which is what GDP is great at calculating, but the quality of that economy. We should be able to answer the question, that next unit of growth, which is where economists love to live at the next unit, did it create more benefits than costs? And if it didn't, and we're not counting the costs, we're only counting the benefits, then maybe we've entered an era of what my colleague and mentor Herman Daly called uneconomic growth, right? Where each new unit of growth is creating more costs than benefits. Why would any sane society continue to sort of expand an economy in a way that creates more costs than benefits? Because 
The benefits are concentrated into the hands of the few and the costs are spread on everyone else, including future generations. GDP has done that really well. Other metrics have started to point to the loss of quality of life, the loss of well-being. I mean, what are we celebrating? We're the biggest economy in the world, but we have the highest poverty rate amongst rich countries. We have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. Um, our, our children are now dying more from guns than anything else. All of those things are great for a growing, expanding economy, but are they good for our well-being? Are they good for peace and prosperity? Is there uh, the relationship between like an expanding economy? I mean, is there a way, how would you recalculate this? In other words, sure. um, if we're looking at like a situation where, um, uh, let's say a company like, like DuPont, uh, they, they're, they're pouring their C8 into the water. So, I mean, this is a, this was a, you know, a case that was, that was, uh, that uh, widely known. They're pouring their uh, chemical into the waters instead of like burning it like they're supposed to. Um, they're making more money. Yeah. They're, you know, their, their revenue is up. Uh, their shareholders get more money. They go out and spend more stuff. But of course, other people are uh, dying of cancer. Um, right. And that begins, but they've got to spend money on the cancer treatment. Um, they've got to uh, maybe hire somebody to help them, you know, uh, w w deal with their uh, their sickness, et cetera, et cetera. GDP just keeps going up because of all of those those things. Right. Um, but how would what costs would you and how would you like how would you re uh, um, uh, calculate that real world equation into an economic equation? Sure, sure. So the, the Biden administration is going down this path, actually. Um, they have this, this cross-government approach where they're trying to understand the, the very dependence on the health of, of an economy on the health of the environment, right? So to really start to elucidate some of those, exactly some of those trade-offs. Because right now, the expansion of an economy or a business enterprise or the creation of a product, all those benefits are easy to count. What did it sell for? How many jobs did it create? What was what, what taxes were paid? But the costs, right, the depletion of the environment, the pollution of the environment, those are all either ignored, right, or the insanity of it is, is that when we deplete our soils, when we pollute our waters, when we spew pollutants into the atmosphere, those are largely ignored. Um, this, this comes down to a kind of economics that really should be more thoughtful about the balance between private benefits and costs and public benefits and costs. And all of this is by design. Um, under the kind of Reagan revolution, right, there was this executive order passed, uh, executive order 12291, that mandated, right, that we do economic cost benefit analysis on all public policy. The implication of that is it's really easy to count the benefits of a growing economy and very difficult to count the costs. And so that therefore ushered in a whole system, a whole ideology that says privatize everything. Mm -hmm. Everything that matters is what's measured in the marketplace. And if we can't measure it in the marketplace, then it doesn't matter. So is that yeah. kind? Of, yeah, would you ca call Please. that the financialization of growth? Yes. I mean, I, that's that's where I feel like we're kind of zeroing in on is growth in sectors that benefit people more broadly and are not concentrated at the top. It is not incentivized in the same way that financialized growth is, which is. Uh, built on the myth of endless growth under capitalism that really only b benefits the people at the top who are hoarding the wealth that comes from any growth in that area. Thank you for that. Yeah, all, all economics and all economies are an expression of a society's values. And in doing research for this book, I dug up an old quote, quote from Margaret Thatcher, who said, economics are the method. The object is to change the heart and soul, right? So when we think to the kind of economics that I was indoctrinated in through the 80s and 90s, the kind of economics that we teach our young people today is meant to change the heart and soul, is meant to educate consumers, right? Not citizens. Is meant to sort of financial, your, your, your thing about financialization, right? 
is meant to say all things of value are in dollar terms. And if it's not in dollar terms, then it doesn't count. Yet I remind my students, we wrote the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act, the National Environmental Policy Act, uh, the Civil Rights Act, right? All, all of these kind of progressive hallmarks of the U.S. legal system didn't have an economic cost calculus built into them. We did those things because they were morally right to do. We did those things based on science-informed democracy. We did those things because the economy is meant to be our servant, not our master. We have flipped everything around in the last few decades. And so is the, is the fix a, a way, is it about recalculating so that we have like, you know, both, let's say, you know, uh, that we're, we're, we're actually sure. accounting for all economic account, uh, you know, activity and maybe even putting a number to like, Hey, when, you know, Sam has to spend two hours, um, uh, you know, or 10 hours or, or 50 hours trying to get his door fixed and his, yeah, yeah. you know, the his TV back and his computer and he lost all those photos. We're going to put a number on that. And that's going to, uh, uh, you know, we're going to put that on the cost side of the ledger uh, and put it against the sort of like uh, whatever the, re the the economic activity, uh, you know, yeah. the revenue generating side for other people. And that's going to balance it out. I mean, is that the answer? I think it's part of the answer. I think it's a transition strategy of kind of if you play by the current rules of the game, you got to have to put a dollar value on things, right? So we've done this in Vermont. We've passed into law a genuine progress indicator where we go through and systematically take the GDP accounts for Vermont and walk through it and say, this is a benefit. This is a cost, a regrettable expense. These are things like the value of household work that aren't counted. Here's the adjustment for income distribution and wealth distribution, right? And we go through and meticulously, like a national income accountant would do, make those changes for this one metric of how Vermont asked the question, how well are we doing? Speaking of how well we're doing, my lights went off see, because we're trying to we're trying to save energy here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that, I think that's one way to do it. But we also have to recognize that not not all values, not all decisions should be weighted by cost benefit calculus. Right. That part of this um, reorientation of an economics that's fair and just and sustainable is about starting to reprioritize our values, right? Make the economy work for us, not the other way around. Uh, there's been so many warnings through the years. Uh, Carl Polanyi in the 1950s wrote this book called The Great Transformation. And he worried about the coming market society, right? Where the society is run by the rules designed and written by economists. And I fear that's what's happening, right? Instead of sort of debating and creating a democracy that frames and, and controls an economic system versus the other way around. 